and welcome back to our session, our last session for this season, and that's the applications of time value of money. Like I mentioned in the previous session, time value of money is one of the key concepts in the area of finance because of its relevance, especially in terms of investment appraisal. And then so also for, so for investment purposes, time value of money is very crucial. In this, in session 11, you were introduced to the key concepts. And in this session, we'll try to use this concept for applications in terms of uh, amortization, where you take a loan and you have to make a fixed payment to be able to, on periodic basis to settle both your principal and interest over time. And how these also can be used for pension planning and deferred annuity cases. So then at the end of the session, you should be able to make simple investment decisions based on time value of money applications, be able to solve amortization problems and advice accordingly, and then improve your understanding of annuities and how these can be utilized for investment decision making. Now let's look at amortization first and then how it is applied. Now, amortization typically looks at the reduction of a loan balance by applying each month's principal, which is part of a fixed component, uh, payment plan that is instituted when the loan facility is undertaken. So the amortization schedule or table that we have normally is based on the reduction of the loan over time and provides the lender and borrower with the relevant components such as this. Now, all bank loans normally are based on present values of ordinary annuities. So, for example, when we have a 30-year mortgage like this, where Anna borrows 100000 at an annual interest rate of 8%, which is compounded monthly, we will want to compute the required payments that will ensure that the loan is fully paid off, in this case amortized, at the end of 30 years. So then... The 100,000 taken is the present value of future payments that ANAB is expected to make to pay off. And so looking at the 8% per annum divided by the 12 monthly of uh, the 12 months in terms of frequency tells us that for the 30 years that they've got multiplied by the 12 months frequency, we've got 360. So in reality, ANAB is expected to make 360 payments over a period of 30 years of, of 12 months each. Solving for that, we realize that ANAB is supposed to make a monthly payment of 733.76. Now let's see how that plays out in the amortization schedule. So on day one or period one, month one of the first year, ANAB will make the payments of 733.76 to the bank. Now, because the interest is 8% per annum, divided by 12 will give us the monthly interest that is accrued on the loan of 100,000. Once that is computed, which appears to be 666.67, then of the 733 that are now paid to the bank, 666.67 goes to pay interest. And the amount left to pay up on the principal is 67.1. That means that at the end of the first month, the loan balance reduces only by $67, bringing the remaining amount to 99932 now, this becomes the beginning balance for month two. ANAB is going to make the 733 once again. Interest will now be uh, computed on the 99. And that brings us to another 666. But as you can see, it has reduced from the 0.67 to the 0.22 because now the outstanding loan balance is not the 100,000, but it's 99. And then the principal repayment goes up a bit. And so this is how the amortization schedule works. So over the life of the loan, which is 30 years to month 360, so here it's truncated at 24, we see that as the loan balance keeps on reducing, the monthly interest component also reduces, for which reason from the fixed payments that are 
given by ANAV, an increasing portion goes for principal repayments, and that is how amortization schedule works. So then, it is important that for any business that seeks to take up a loan facility from any business, the intrinsic question to ask is whether the payments to be made to settle the loan will be generated from the use of that asset. And if the answer is yes, then it becomes a viable investment that can be taken up. So now there's another example where we have a 15-year mortgage on, mon on annual ba uh, monthly basis. So this is also recomputed and that brings us to 955. So for the same amount of money to be paid over a shorter period of time, the payment amount goes up. Now, in the same intrinsic placement for applications for time value of money, you can use this to plan for pension. Now, pension is usually for most of us in the near future. So what it means is that you need to have a fair idea of how much you need to start saving towards your pension. Now, how much you need to start saving towards your pension is dependent on how much money you plan or you need to have available when you go on pension. And to a large extent, you have, need to have a fair idea how long you expect to live after you go on retirement. So then, with that, you're able to have a fair idea how, much you, how long you will live after you go on retirement how much money you have must have for each period after you've gone on retirement, you can then extrapolate that and then determine how much must be available, therefore, when you go on retirement. And then, by extension, how much you should start putting away today to achieve that. So now, this particular one comes under the context of what we refer to as a deferred annuity because then, Having determined how much income you need to have sometime in the future, you need to now know how much you must save to be able to generate that income flow. Now, another angle that you can look at also, another extension is the growing annuity, which gives you a stream of cash flows for a period of time, but these same cash flows begin to grow or decline at a particular or a constant rate over time. So now this becomes the formula for the growing annuity, which is, if you look closely, is similar to the ordinary annuity formula, but adjusted for the growth rate of the investment. Now, here we look at an example of a typical deferred annuity. So take a hypothetical client who is 35 years old now who would like to retire at age 65, that is 30 years from today. Now her goal is to have enough in her retirement account to provide an estimated income of 75000 every year based on her needs. And this income is supposed to start a year after retirement, i.e. 31 years when she is 30, is actually 30 one years from today and she hopes to live for 25 years thereafter now because she did not start saving early for retirement she only has a current balance of 10,000 to be able to catch up she is committed to saving at least about 5,000 a year but then she is also constrained because she's got children who are in school so she will not be able to improve her 5,000 per year commitment until the kids have gone out of school. And once the kids go out of school, she knows that she can put all her income away towards her retirement. The kids are expected to go out from school in about 10 years. So 10 years from today, she wants to be able to, using that information, determine how much she must re-put away. Okay, so from the summary of the question, we go back to looking at this one. She already has 10,000 in her accounts. It means as of time zero, we already have a standing inflow of 10,000 working towards our retirement plan. The second one is the 5,000 she's going to make every year for the next 10 years. And then from year 11 onwards, she is going to make up extra after the kids have gone out of school. So then what it means is that 
the money that she needs to make from years 31 that is 30 years from 31 years from today through to 50 which is age 66 because she goes on retirement at age 65 through to 90 is summarized as follow now first and foremost we need to pick up her annual pension income that she has estimated so then we're going to determine the present value of that for the 25 years at 8 percent it means that when she goes on retirement, she must have an estimated amount of 800608 in her bank account. Now, what it means is that all the three cash flows, first, her initial 10000 her 5000 contribution, and the unknown amount she will start contributing from years 11 through to 30, must all add up to the eight. 100,608. So then it means that whatever the case, there would be an intrinsic value missing of 362 at time T30. In other words, the money she saves from years 11 through to 30 will need to be equal to 362,375 if she is to meet her retirement goals. So now that's how we then work it. So then applying the relevant formulas, we first look at the future value of the 10,000 from now for 30 years. Then we're going to look at the 5,000 every year for the 10 years, which will now from the end of year 10 will be rolled over through to year 30. And then the difference is what we are going to solve for starting from years 11 through to 30. And so that's for the period. Now that adds up to tell us how much extra she needs to save towards her retirement when her kids go out of college. I believe you would have an interesting time using this example to shape up your understanding of time value of money and then preparing yourself for our next session, which will be Think 302 when we meet once more in the next semester. I hope you enjoy the course. We'll meet once again. Thank you.